Hi, today um, I said I'd do another video and today what we're talking about is hand carding and then eventually uh, how to use your Rolags that you'll be making for woolen spinning. So first of all let's start. I have here a pair of, well, bog standard-ish hand carders. Um, these are, as you can see, flat backed. Uh, there's no real reason for this. I just find it's it's what I learnt on, so it's my personal preference. Uh, and it doesn't really matter whether you start with curved or flat back hand carders. It's just whatever feels comfortable to you, really. Um, yeah. And the idea when you're using hand carders is that you want to try and make a carded preparation. So let me show you how to do that. So here I have, let's put that down so you can see, some fleece. This is a washed blue face Leicester crossed with the Ryland. And if I pull a lock out, you can see it's quite a nice crimpy fleece. So first of all, I'm going to place a hand carder on my lap like this. I'm going to slightly open out the lock just a bit. I'm going to lay the butt, the handle end of the carder, okay, like that. I'm then going to take another lock and do exactly the same thing. These are quite big locks so I won't get very many on this carder. Just open the butts out. Now the idea with hand carding is more is less is more sorry if you overload your carder it's going to make far more effort for you in the long run now I have locks on my carder in my other hand I take the other carder I bring it over where the, it's where the handle is and brush lightly over the top and do about four these passes. Okay, now you'll notice I have wool on both hand carders. What I need to do now is take the right hand carder with the slightly smaller amount on and I'm going to make it so the teeth go in the same direction, so like this, and put brush gently and push it up. That will transfer anything that was on here onto this carder here. You can see this is now transferred. I brush about four times again. That now distributes the fibre again. Now you've already carded this. This is now the carded stuff because you've carded that over. The stuff that was on this carder you've already carded again on the other side. So you want to card this another time. So you're then again you're going to transfer it like we did with the other not with the onto this carder and card a few times on this card. Then you're going to transfer it back onto this card and transfer it back. Do the same thing, transferring it back. That will lift your fibre off and now you have a kind of, I'd say a sheet, but it's not. You just, you haven't, now the Rolag part happens. Now if you saw, I just took that off of the carding cloth and now I'm going to place it onto this, the wooden back of the carder. Now I like, I'm like i right handed so I like to do this with my right hand. I'm going to take the flat back of this carder. With my three fingers I'm going to place one here, one in the mid, one um, on that edge, the middle on in the middle, the mid, my first finger in the middle and my thumb on the other edge and squish it in so it's about the width of the hand carder. Then I'm going to do that and place the tip of the right hand card, the right carder, on the fibre. And then I'm going to remove it and put my hand where that was. Now, using the tip here, I'm going to bring it up and roll it over. I can then take my hand away and replace it. So essentially, I am just making making it a position in which I can move my hand back and roll a little bit more up each time. Now the problem with my hand carders here is the handles do get in the way but that is something that I can overcome. Now once you've rolled it up 
between the two carders, just roll it a little bit and that will just keep it in place. And now you have a Rolag. Um, that is, this was a very nice fleece to prepare because it was oh, it's fairly open and doesn't take lots of carding. Now you'll see that Rolag is nice and even and that is not too compacted either. So that will pull out nicely. Now, as for spinning it, the traditional way to spin a Rolag is with an English long ball. Now, this is my wheel. This is, again, Shack Matchless. It's set up in Scotch Tension, which I like better for long draw because it can give a more aggressive take-up, whereas double drive could be a bit more subtle. And I don't like that when I'm spinning from long draw because I feel I need the extra take-up to draw the yarn in quick enough. I have a bit of pipe lagging on my bobbin. That's just personal preference. It helps to slow things down just a little bit, just a bit. Not too much though. Um, I'm on a 19 to 1 ratio, which is quite high because, of course, I, I like to spin at fairly high speeds. My wheel is a double treadle, in case you wonder. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to do this English long roll now. Join on your fibre at one end of this Rolag. Let's see if I can just angle it a bit round so you can see this better. Now, building up some twist, build up a little bit of twist, okay? Pinch off here. This is probably an inch of Rolag. Keep twisting. Let twist into this hand and pull back and stretch out, stretch out that piece you've just pinched off. So that's all it is, you just stretch that out and then you'll see this is quite thick and not very twisted at the minute. So you need to keep treadling and keep pulling it back, which is going to stretch your row lag into yarn. <coughs> now you can remove this hand when you feel your yarn seen thin enough. Keep treadling to add twist and then you're going to go into the wheel in a smooth motion like that. Okay, I'll show you again. I pin I've got my rollag here and I'm pinching the twist back with this front hand. One, two, three, and pull off your rollag. Pull off your bit of rollag. Now that is not twisted enough yet and it's not thin enough for how I want it. So I'm gonna keep pulling back. Make sure making sure I wrap it round my finger to stop twist entering the rollag. But you could pinch, you could sort of pinch like this. Or anything that works really, but I just like the and the twist around my finger helps better, and it's probably because when I, su I support spinning, I do this as well. Now you'll see again, I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, and I pulled out a bit too much there, but that's not a problem. You can just pitch back on another piece of yarn that you've already made and keep pulling that. Okay, so let's show you again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull back. More twist, so straight from my yarn, and then one smooth motion. And let's show you full speed. Okay, and that's my Rolag spun, and you can make a bunch of these and spin them after another. Now, tip on the unfinished yarn. You can see my singles here. That's the single I've managed to make. That's not overly thin. Now, let's show you how that plies up. You'll you'll notice that it plies up, and it looks very airy. And see that has bounce. That is what happens when you have the woolen preparation, which means your Rolag has fibres going in all sorts of directions. Um, combined with this way of spinning where you don't regulate the way the fibres go, not like in a, a worsted draw when you are regulating that all your fibres are in the same direction. So for example like this, this lock here, 
all those fibers you see are in the same direction and you'd add twist to those and your yarn would be denser. The fact that this fleece is, has half ryland in it would also indicate that it's slightly more springy than um, other fleeces might be. So that's just a general quick-ish <laughs> introduction to hand carding and English long draw and let me know what you think. Hope you like it.